there's no doubt about that, that the Lord Jesus Christ is worthy of all of our praise and adoration. I know many of you have accepted him as a Savior and the Lord of your life. If you're here today and do not know him, or if you're watching online, I trust that God's Holy Spirit is already working on your heart and uh, convicting you of your sin of rejection. As John 3.18 talks about, you're already condemned, and you need to solve that issue. And the only way that you can solve that is recognizing who Jesus truly, truly is and accepting him as a Savior and the Lord of your life. Today, I really want to speak to us as believers as we think about our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. As we're thinking, uh, last Sunday we were talking about some of the issues that we're facing within our nation, within our community, uh, those things that will be on the November 5th ballot that we need to be talking about that we mentioned a little bit earlier that uh, we need to stand up as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ and, and vote our convictions. Hopefully those are biblical convictions that we'll be voting on and so uh, express our desire in accordance with God's will for our life. But I really wanted to challenge us this morning as individual believers and kind of get the focus off of others and centered on ourselves this morning. And so the first passage that I want to share with is a familiar passage out of 2 Corinthians 7.14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Heal their land. I preached on this before, but I just wanted to remind us of that particular passage this morning to kind of get its thinking in the same direction this morning. As I talked about some of the issues last Sunday, as I said, I want to really concentrate on this morning, not who's going to be in the White House or who is in the White House or who's going to be the Vice President or who is our Vice President or the issues that are facing us this morning, but I want to concentrate on who lives at 2702 Northeast Gospel Road, Rodney and Geneva Door. Who lives at your house? And so let's take our focus for a moment off of everybody else out there and concentrate on yourself personally. Yourself personally. And so the title of my message is this morning, Renewed Covenant. Renewed Covenant. You see, the most important thing is that you and I individually are committed to the Lord Jesus Christ 100%. And so Joshua, the 24th chapter, is where we're going to land this morning. So turn there with me, if you would. Uh, it's on page 224, <laughs> at least in my Bible. That'll get you close. That'll get you close. Joshua, chapter 24, beginning there in verse 1. Then Joshua assembled all the tribes of Israel at Shechem, he summoned the elders, leaders, judges, and officials of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. I want us to concentrate on that as we have assembled ourselves together this morning. And you remember that I referred to uh, Joshua 24, verse 15, as we looked at that. If serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day who you will serve whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. I hope that you've made that commitment in a personal way. But that's my challenge today that we might really concentrate upon that. That's a challenge that Joshua put before the people here as they gathered there in Shechem in Shechem, renewing their covenant with God Almighty. Renewing their covenant with God Almighty. As they gathered there at Shechem, Joshua began to talk with them and remind them of things of the past. And so the point is, time and time again, God Almighty came to the aid of the nation of Israel. And I want to reflect upon that just for a few moments. Joshua actually was one of those young people that came out of Egypt well before this time that we're talking about this morning. He's close to 110 years old. The scripture says he dies 
at the age of 110. And so he was a young man. He was an aide, actually, to Moses as a youth, as they came out of Egypt on that occasion. I mean, can you imagine? I want you to put yourself in the place of Joseph just for a few moments. Can you imagine being a young man coming out of Egypt? Your family's been, your history has been bondage for years and years in Egypt. And so they begin to make their way. They end up at the Red Sea. He's there when Moses takes his staff and raises his arms before the Red Sea, and the Red Sea parts from one point to the other. And they, dr and they walk across on dry ground. They're on the other side, and here comes Pharaoh and all of his chariots and all of his horses and all of his guards and all of his mighty men that are following him. And then God allows the Red Sea to come on them and destroys everybody in front of them. I mean, Joshua is taking in all of these scenes as we think about that together this morning. And then later on we know that the nation of Israel really turns against the Lord God Almighty because he's promised them the promised land. He sends the spies in to check out Canaan. And Joshua and Caleb have the privilege of going with the other spies that are going in to that nation of Canaan. And they come back with a positive report, a minority report, that is Caleb, Caleb and Joshua. And the other ten turn against them. And so because of that, denying God's will and entering into the promised land, then Joshua and the nation of Israel and Moses and all of those that are with him wander in the wilderness for those 40 years. Joshua is taking all of this type of stuff in that we know in the Old Testament that we studied about and preached about before. And so they're wandering there in the wilderness. Finally, those that refuse to do God's will have died away. And Joseph and Caleb and the new generation stand on the eastern banks of the Jordan across from Jericho. You with me this morning? There they stand, and Joshua has a word from God. What I want you to do is get the Ark of the Covenant and I want the priests to go down and all they need to do is touch their feet to the river Jordan and I will dam it up. Actually, what happens is for 16 miles north, the waters stop. And they walk across on dry ground and you know the story. And because of the significance of that moment, Joshua says, I want one representative from every one of the 12 tribes to go and take a rock out of the midst of Jordan and place it on the other side of the shoreline as the priests are still standing there in the midst of the Jordan and everything is dammed up for 16 miles to the north. And so then all the people of Israel cross over onto the western side of the Jordan, there in front of Jericho. And then once everybody's across and the Ark of the Covenant comes out, then the waters come back. I mean, Joshua is taking in all of this now, but he's an adult. He's an adult now, taking in all of these things that have happened. Time and time again, God has performed great miracles. They walk around the city walls of Jericho one time a day for six days. Then on that seventh day, you remember, they walked around seven times. And what happens? The walls come tumbling down and Jericho surrenders. But it also has an impression upon all of those that are in the Canaan-Israel area at that point in time. And they are fearful, the scripture says. If you'll read that and study that for yourself, fear comes upon all of them because they cannot stand against the Israelites and the God that they serve. And so that's the attitude that Joshua has at this point in the nation of Israel as they gather there. And so now we pick it up here in Joshua, the 24th chapter, as Joshua calls all the people together there at Shechem. And that's what I want to concentrate on this morning as we think about that today. It's a time to remember the things of the past, but also to renew our covenant with God Almighty, who has been with us all of these years. And that's a challenge that Joshua puts before the people. And that's when he declares, it's a time for you to decide. Are you going to serve the Lord, or is it too cumbersome to you. Make up your mind today which way you're going to be. 
you know, I'm going to have my mind made up. It's my, my mind's made up today. But I'd guarantee you it will be made up on November the 5th when I go into the election polls because of what I understand God's word to say and how I need to operate. And so that's my challenge today. I want us to renew a covenant with God Almighty through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit today as we think about these things together. So I thought about the times in my personal life, and that's what I want you to think about this morning. As I reflect upon some of the things that God has done in my life, I want you to think for yourself about the times that God has visited you in a very special way. Joshua has just recited those times in the nation of Israel where God intervened and God spoke to the nation and turned them back around. So as I reflect personally upon my experiences, you think about your experiences, your relationship in the Lord Jesus Christ, since the time that you accepted Jesus as your Savior. Maybe it's been recent, but maybe you're here like me, and you're well up in years, and God has spoken to you on numerous other occasions as well, too. I can remember the time that Geneva and I went to Titusville, Florida. I think I've shared that with you a few months ago. We took a trip with uh, about three or four uh, tour buses and went down to Park Avenue Baptist Church in Titusville, Florida. And that's when God really spoke to me. I was an engineer at that time, uh, serving there in Indiana. But God said, Rodney, it's time for you to make a move. It's time for you to change your career. It's time for you to surrender to the gospel ministry full time. And that's when God spoke to my heart. It was a significant, significant time in my life and the life of my family at that time. We already had three children by that time. And God had spoken to us and said, I want you to move back to your home state of Missouri and take up ministry there. A big, big change for our family. But I knew that God had directed me and led me. You remember that we served at First Baptist Church of Branson for numbers of years as well, too. And I've shared this with you before, too, but it was a significant time when... God was saying, it's time for you to move from Branson and go in ministry in another direction. And I can remember fishing, Dean, for trout in Taney Como, and I was standing in knee-deep water that, that night, 46-degree temperature water, and I was fishing for trout, and it was a beautiful, beautiful starlit night and a full moon. And it was like God was speaking to my heart and saying, you're where you need to be. You need to move from Branson, and you need to be on to what I have in store for you. That was another significant time. Another significant time was when a missionary, one of our IMB missionaries, came back from Rhodesia. This was at Hamilton Street Baptist Church in Kirksville at that particular time. And that's a, a couple of weeks ago I shared with you, I changed my whole understanding of what the Holy Spirit was in my heart and in my life. And he shared with us about the person of the Holy Spirit. And it was a significant time for me to learn and understand who the Holy Spirit was and how he needed to be involved in my heart and in my life. And there were numerous other times as well, too. Somebody was talking about, uh, I guess I was wearing my Promise Keeper t-shirt. And Daniel and I reflected upon that uh, just this last week. And I said, uh, well, where did you go? And we talked a little bit about promise keepers that used to be very prevalent uh, years and years ago. But I can remember that time in Columbia as we gathered there in Columbia. And there were thousands and thousands of men and, and boys that were around in that uh, gymnasium or, the, excuse me, that uh, auditorium area. And we were praising the Lord and lifting our voices in praise and adoration. Another time was when we were in Atlanta, Georgia, I was in the Atlanta Dome. There were 7,000 ministers that were there, lifting their voices and praising God for who he was and our commitment to him. So these are just a few of the times that I really believe that God, like Joshua and the people here, had spoken to me in a personal, personal way. And I renewed that commitment. I renewed that commitment. So now I challenge us as we think about that this morning today, how God is going to speak to our hearts. And I just want to give you an opportunity, as you've been thinking, I hope, along with me. Anybody, 
Stand up and give testimony of how God has spoken to your heart in a particular way. I want to hear that this morning. You've heard me. Amen. Amen. Somebody else, give testimony to the Lord this morning. Somebody else. Thank you. Anybody else? Joe. As you all know, my husband and I have had a kind of an interesting two and a half months, but he was not wearing a seatbelt when we were off-roading uh, three days after I lost my job. And God not only saved Brad's life, kept him from being paralyzed. I have had very few injuries, and all I had on was my lap belt. Uh, God found a brand new job for me where I'm still helping people. Uh, Brad is Amen. Anybody else? Lily? Um, like you remember maybe a year or something ago when the doctor called me and said you have cancer and I got all the stuff there. I know when the Lord healed me, when he came to visit my body in my room. I know, I don't know why, he's 
Amen. Well, I hope that each of us this morning, even through these testimonies, we've been thinking about ways that God has intervened within our lives and changed us and got us going back in the right direction. And that was my goal this morning, that we might personally reflect upon these times that God has really time and time again come to our aid and helped us to understand. And so as I close this morning, I want us to think about afresh and anew this morning, renewing our hearts and renewing a covenant with the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know where you are this morning. I don't know what the needs are here or even online, but God knows that. God knows that, just like the testimonies that we just heard this morning as well, too. So the first point that I want to make for us this morning as we think about renewing our covenant with God Almighty is that we need to search our own heart and search our own life. And that's what Joshua was was saying to the people of Israel. Choose today for yourselves this day whom you will serve. Many of us have served him through the years. But I find myself in a position almost daily of having to renew that commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ and starting afresh and anew, remembering the past, yes, but allowing that to project me on into the future that I might preach and teach and share and live for the God Almighty and the Lord Jesus Christ. So Joshua challenges the people there in verse 15. But I want us to pick it up in verse 19. Look with me once again into the scriptures. After Joshua has shared all of this with the people, they reflected upon their history, if you will. Verse 19, he says, Joshua said to the people, You are not able to serve the Lord. He is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your rebellion and your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, he will turn and bring disaster on you and make an end of you after he has been good to you. But the people said to Joshua, No, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said, You are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen to serve the Lord. Yes, we are witnesses, they replied. Now then, Joshua said, Throw away the foreign gods that are among you and yield your heart to the Lord, the God of Israel. That's two things that I want to really concentrate on this morning as we bring this to a conclusion this morning. Joshua challenges the people there to purge their hearts and their lifestyle. First of all, he says, forsake or throw away the foreign gods that have been brought into your heart and into your life. You know, on a regular basis, I can recognize and the Holy Spirit reveals to me some things that I've yet not thrown away and got rid of. And it hampers me in my faith and my obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ because he wants me, as Joshua says, to yield your heart totally and completely to God Almighty, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit for us in a New Testament concept. So here's my challenge this morning. What is God revealing to your heart and to my heart today, right now, this instantaneous moment. And I just want to reflect upon and maybe be a reminder to some of us by alluding to two or three or four things. But I want the Holy Spirit to really reveal to your heart, dear believer in the Lord Jesus, what you need to get rid of. Maybe it's an habitual sin. Maybe it's something that just keeps cropping into your heart and into your life. And The devil knows how to trigger that, doesn't he? So you know what I'm talking about. I don't need to know it. You and God the Father, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, it's revealed to you this instantaneous moment, an habitual sin. Maybe it's a married relationship. Maybe within our congregation or even online, you know that things are not exactly like they need to be in your married relationship. And that's that foreign God, if you will, that's interfering with your relationship with God Almighty. Maybe it's sexual immorality, or maybe it's uh, filthy language. I was speaking with someone just last Sunday, and they shared with me, obviously I'll not reveal their name, 
but they were in an environment, a mission field in their work setting, and they have a tendency to begin to pick up the language of the world that's around them. You know, I don't know what it is this morning, folks, but I believe that God's Holy Spirit right now is revealing those things to you in a personal way. And that's what Joshua was challenging the people. That's a foreign God. That's something that's outside of our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ that we recognize as there, but we don't allow Satan to tempt us in that way anymore. My challenge this morning is give it to the Lord. Get rid of it. Get rid of it this morning, whatever it might be. An unforgiving spirit, a root of bitterness. I shared with you about my grandmother numbers of times before of her dying with a bitter spirit. That's not of the Lord. Get rid of that this morning. So the challenge is there in verse 15 of chapter 24, the latter part of that, where Joshua says, but as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. My dear friend, what is that this morning that you're hanging on to? Years and years ago, when I was at First Baptist Church of Branson, it was back in the early 80s, there was three young men in St. Paul, Minnesota. They were convicted of the Lord about foreign gods and the things that were going on in that particular time in 1980. A lot of rock music was going on. And so they picked up on that and they said to young people, they said, you're listening to people that are ungodly. These people are involved in ungodly things. And because of that, and they went around from town to town across Minnesota and even in the state of Missouri as well too. And they would challenge young people to bring their rock music to a burn pile and throw it on there because they were worshiping foreign gods through their music because of what it represented. Now, I never did get involved in that, but I remembered that as I was preparing this particular message. Now, I'm not going to challenge you to bring all your rock music to the church tonight and we'll have a bonfire. That's not the point. But the point is, whatever God has convicted you of this morning, bring it to the Lord and surrender it to him. I will share with you that there has been a couple of times that I've taken some videos out of our library at home and uh, crushed them and thrown them away because God convicted me. This is wrong. This is wrong for you, Rodney, and get it out of your life. So whatever it is this morning that God has revealed to you, I would trust that you would surrender that to him. And I want to close by sharing with you how God led Joshua on this particular occasion. Pick it up once again in our scripture this morning as we look at that together there in Joshua chapter 24 in verse 25. On that day, Joshua made a covenant for the people and there at Shechem, he reaffirmed for them decrees and laws. And Joshua recorded these things in the book of the law of God and then he took a large stone and set it up under the oak near the holy place of the Lord. He said, see, this stone will be a witness against us. It has heard all the words the Lord has said to us. It will be a witness against you if you are untrue to your God. And then Joshua dismissed the people, each to their own inheritance. You know, as I was studying this passage, I thought of a stone that's on my dresser. I don't remember the occasion now, but this stone represents a time like I've been talking about this morning, just like this morning. And I was in a time of worship, and I heard the preacher, and God convicted me, and I renewed my covenant with the Lord. And this is a representation of that. Now, I don't have a bunch of stones here this morning. I thought about bringing a bunch of stones in this morning and allowing you to pick up a stone. But this represents renewing our covenant. And this stone that I hold in my hand this morning has heard me preach. And he's here with us. 
God Almighty. And so my challenge as we close this morning is very simple. Very simple. As Joshua said in these particular passages, whatever you have renewed a covenant with God Almighty, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit this morning, I trust that you purified your heart. I trust that you have renewed your covenant with him. But maybe it's time for you in just a moment as we close and as Amy, Amy begins to play, you need to come individually to this altar. Or maybe you as a husband and wife need to come. Or maybe you as a family need to come and renew your covenant with God Almighty based upon what the Holy Spirit has revealed to you this morning. Let's go to the Lord in prayer as Amy begins to play and you allow God to move in your heart and then move in your life. Father, thank you for this time together this morning. As we have sought your face, as we have sung the hymns of our faith, rejoice in the relationships that we have with you. But Lord, I believe that it is a time for each of us as individuals to renew our commitment to God Almighty. And so Lord, I just pray that you would have your will and have your way this morning as we seek your face, turn from our foreign gods and get rid of those things and be filled with the Holy Spirit that we might be the people of God that you've called us to be. Lord, as people are even moving this morning, I just pray that you would continue to speak to our hearts in this time of invitation, whether it be here physically or there online. Have your will and have your way, Father. We ask this in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.